Bertram, Everard said, is a special case. You have no such excuse. Enough, damn it, Reynard shouted. There is nothing wrong with my living arrangements. Misha sneezed again. Blast, Reynard said. Fine. Maybe it is a trifle dusty. I can get Peterson to clean a bit, I suppose. It might be more efficient to burn it all down, Misha muttered. Reynard looked at him then, his cheeks burning with color. I've had other things on my mind lately, like computer security breaches and thieving magpies. He said that last sentence while challenging Misha with his eyes. Misha arched a brow and grinned, but said nothing in response. Magpies? Everard demanded, filling the silence. Ray, I've heard you say some bizarre things in your time, but are you saying your lair has been compromised, of all things, by birds? Have you finally gone mad? Perhaps, Reynard said. It feels as if I've stumbled into bedlam. It seemed to Misha that, if left to his own devices, Everard would never stop talking. If Misha wanted privacy, he'd need to take charge. Luckily, his training had prepared him for how to manage even the most stubborn dragon. Mr. Drake, he said, is not mad. Well, he's, he's not any more insane than your average dragon. He and I shall get along just fine. You two, he waggled his finger at Everard and his mate, can run along now. Your presence is not needed. Come back in a week. I'll sort this all out. Everard frowned. But thank you for bringing me to my new home. Please leave now. Your home? Reynard asked weakly. Misha turned back to him. Yes, for at least the next two hits, this will be my home. Now, as your resident consort and Chatelaine, shut up and let me handle this situation. Misha turned his bright smile toward Reynard's brother and brother-in-law. Goodbye, you may return in a week to check on your brother. And you, Harry pointed out, we need to establish that uh, coitus has occurred. He whispered the word coitus and covered the pink whelp's eyes with his hand. The pink whelp nibbled on his finger. Ow! Darwin, gently. Papa needs that finger for typing. I assure you, coitus will occur, but not with you hovering, Misha retorted tartly. Really? Did they expect to watch? Misha did not relish an audience of Reynard's relatives spectating his loss of virginity. Your brother and I can manage this without your help. Everard looked annoyed. I'm not so sure, Ev, Reynard said, sounding exhausted. I know it's not standard procedure, but please allow me a modicum of privacy. I don't see why, Everard grumbled, but he still allowed his mate to pull him away and out the front door. I'll be back in a week, Reynard, and if your situation isn't improved, I'm telling father. No one likes a tattler, Reynard called after him. Misha closed the door behind them and threw the bolt. Elon, at least, he said. For a moment there was uncomfortable silence where Reynard did nothing but stare at him, looking from his face to his feet and back again. Misha stood a little taller, mindful of his posture, and kept his chin the slightest bit elevated as the dragon drank him in. Magpie? Reynard asked at length. His voice sounded thin and unsure. How on earth? Hello, my sturdy drug. I finally done the impossible and hacked into your lair. I don't suppose you'd show me your hoard, but you? I don't understand how you're here.